Hello, you're watching the news from Bahrain International with Samar Arjawi. The organizing committee of the e-government excellence award 2023 announced that preparations are underway for the 12th edition. The Kingdom of Bahrain, public entities, private organizations, civil societies and individuals are invited to participate and showcase their digital initiatives. Registration for the award will soon be available. The Information and e-government authority chief executive officer Mohamed Al Qaid stated that the 12th edition of the award has undergone updates to align with the current and future requirements of the information and communication technology sector ICT. He pointed out that one of the aspects of the developing award for this year is the development of new areas that keep pace with and support digital transformation and adopt digital innovation and the use of emerging technologies, especially artificial intelligence technologies. The public and private sector categories have now been merged, acknowledging the rapid technological advancement across all sectors of the Kingdom. The integration aims to better highlight various technological initiatives enhancing the reputation of the Kingdom and the ICT sector at the local regional and global levels. The committee encourages all eligible institutions and individuals to promptly nominate and submit their participation once the registration period opens shortly. The Chief Executive Officer of the Labour Fund Tamkeen, Maha Mufiz, stressed the importance of supporting youth talents, strengthening the skills and creative thinking of Bahrain's youth and ensuring their continued development and empowerment. She pointed out the importance of launching the 2030 Youth City in its 12th edition, which will constitute a continuation of the successes achieved by the city and qualify more youth in the future. The CEO of Tamkeen added that the Youth City 2030 is one of the projects that Tamkeen has been keen to support and sponsor over the last few years, stressing the importance of empowering the Bahraini youth in line with the requirements of the labor market, enhancing their capabilities and skills, and preparing them for the markets by increasing their experience, knowledge, and knowledge through programs and initiatives designed in a manner and modern way that contributes to advancing ideas, youth, business, growth, and entrepreneurial projects which are an essential element for building the national economy. She praised the cooperation between Tamkeen and the Ministry of Youth Affairs, which resulted in the launch of a number of joint programs and initiatives, including Youth City 2030 and the Global Practical Training Program aimed at providing training opportunities with international companies that help enrich the experience of Bahraini cadres to improve their skills and capabilities in various fields. The Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, DIRASAT, published the results of an opinion poll on the consumer's awareness of the ingredients in their food products, their label reading habits, ingredients they are concerned about, and patterns they follow to organize food consumption priorities. The center surveyed 713 people with the aim of measuring the awareness of food ingredients and verifying the popularity of reading labels on packaged foods among the consumers. The survey showed the commitment of the research sample to read nutritional data labels in search of calories first and foremost, then sugars and fats. The analytical results showed that members of the same family exchanged advice about nutritional data before the purchase process, while the factors of food ingredients, expiration date and price are of equal importance to them. The data of the analysis of the results showed that 88% of the community research sample was equally important to the abundance of the product and the country of origin, while only 10% preferred organic products, while about 76% of the research sample showed interest in buying long live food. The results of the study indicate good levels of interest in what the individuals eat in the Kingdom of Bahrain in terms of nutritional health priorities, food quality, and patterns of balancing interest in the quality of nutrients with reasonable spending on unwasted food. The Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Commerce prepared and published a survey to evaluate the consumer satisfaction in the e-commerce sector in the Kingdom of Bahrain in response to the growing volume of e-commerce transactions. The efforts come from the Information System Directorate and the Consumer Protection Directorate as the Ministry pays close attention to the e-commerce sector by enhancing consumer trust and awareness of their rights and helping them make sound decisions when shopping online. Moreover, the Ministry is closely monitoring e-commerce platforms and commercial activities related to the e-commerce to ensure that adequate protection is provided to the consumers and to mitigate the risks of fraud in the sector. The Minister also notes that the participation in the survey will be available for two weeks of publication through the Ministry's website www.moic.gov.bh as well as on its social media accounts. 
The Ministry of Industry and Commerce seeks to enhance the communication with the consumers in the field of e-commerce by receiving complaints and observations and developing policies and laws based on their observations and needs. The Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdurrahman al-Assumi, met with the head of the State Council in Egypt, Councillor Abdel Fahim Mohammed Azab, and members of the State Council and State Lawsuits Authority. Al-Assumi affirmed that the royal vision of His Majesty the King regarding consolidating the independence of the judiciary represents the main pillar for the renaissance and progress of the judicial system in the Kingdom of Bahrain. He appreciated the great efforts made by the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, to assist the judiciary system in carrying out its national responsibility, in preserving rights, enhancing the security and stability of society, and achieving the justice system in its comprehensive and modern concept. The head of the Egyptian State Council said that the Kingdom of Bahrain's assumption of the presidency of the Union will have a major role in strengthening the ties of brotherhood and friendship between the administrative courts and the councils of Arab countries. Egypt's President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi met with the Prime Minister of Greece Kyriakos Matsotakis in New Alamein. The meeting witnessed bilateral talks followed by extensive discussions between the delegations of the two countries. The talks dealt with a series of issues of mutual interest including the global repercussions of the Russian-Ukrainian crisis and the developments in Libya. In this respect, President Assisi reiterated Egypt's position of supporting the political track in Libya as well as calling for presidential and parliamentary elections, the exit of all foreign forces and mercenaries from Libyan land and the restoration of Libya's sovereignty territorial integrity and stability. GCC Secretary General Jassim Mohammed al Abdewi stressed the great importance of the strategic partner be partnership between the GCC and the United States of America in enhancing maritime security in the region by securing freedom of maritime navigation and the smooth flow of international trade. This came during his meeting with the commander of the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command U.S. 5th Fleet and Combined Maritime Forces Vice Admiral Brad Cooper at the GCC headquarters of the General Secretariat. During the meeting, they discussed a number of issues related to maritime security in the Arabian Gulf region, strengthening the GCC-U.S. cooperation and working with international and regional partners for this purpose. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is hosting talks to discuss the conflict in Ukraine bringing together the representatives from Kiev, Western powers and developing countries. The Saudi government has invited national security and diplomatic advisors from Ukraine, several of Kiev's key allies and others in the group of 20, such as India, Brazil and China. Russia has not been invited. The meeting, which follows a similar gathering in Copenhagen, Denmark in June, is expected to discuss Vladimir Zelensky's peace formula and the Ukrainian president's efforts to hold a global summit on the proposals later this year. Zelensky's 10-point blueprint calls for Russian troops to withdraw completely from Ukraine, release all the prisoners and deportees, ensure food and energy security. It would also include security guarantees for Ukraine once the fighting is over. The work of the 20th session of the Ministerial Council of the Regional Organization for the Conservation of the Environment of the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden kicked off in the Egyptian city of Garda. During the meeting, the Saudi Minister of Water, Environment and Agriculture, Engineer Abdurrahman bin Abdul Mehsin Al Fadli, affirmed his country's keenness to provide appropriate conditions for achieving growth and stability in the region. The Saudi minister stressed that Saudi Arabia will continue to support the Commission's efforts to achieve environmental goals and consolidate the sustainable development approach in this unique marine environment and to strengthen this path. Minister Al Fadli also revealed that Saudi Arabia, within its package of environmental initiatives, is working to enhance the biodiversity, reduce carbon emissions, reduce land degradation, and improve the quality of life which will contribute to achieving the kingdom's zero neutrality in 2060. The Chinese government has earmarked around 14 million US dollars to support 
post-disaster reconstruction in Beijing and neighboring Hebei province. The central budget funds will be used to support the reconstruction of infrastructure and public services facilities in regions that have been hard hit by the rainstorm and floods. Chinese authorities launched massive rescue and relief efforts in response to typhoon-induced torrential rains, which have led to 11 fatalities in Beijing as of Tuesday morning. The Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Emergency Management have also indicated and allocated around 15 million U.S. dollars to support the emergency rescue and relief work for people affected by the flooding in Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei. The activities of the Crown Prince Camel Festival in its fifth edition was launched in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the auspices of the Saudi Crown Prince, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdel Aziz Al Saud. The event is organized by the Saudi Camel Federation at the Taif Camel Racecourse. Participants from as far as Europe and North America have brought their dromedaries to this year's Crown Prince Camel Festival, which opened at the historic Taif Camel Field earlier this week. The 38-day event aims to showcase Saudi Arabia's camel racing culture, as well as the broader Arab heritage of which the sport enjoys popular support in the region and beyond. This year's event features 589 races and a total prize pool of 14.9 million US dollars for the various race categories. The festival features more than 60,000 camels from Oman, Bahrain, the UAE, Jordan, Qatar, Kuwait, Sudan, and Egypt from the African continent, France, Switzerland from Europe, and the US from North America. The previous editions of the festival, which was launched in 2018, witnessed a remarkable turnout from camel enthusiasts around the world, as the Camel Festival aims to consolidate and promote camel heritage in Saudi Arabia.